Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our Build Your AutoCAD IQ webinar this week. Uh, we are going to be serving mac and cheese. That's right, AutoCAD for the Mac. And we do have a special guest presenter, Jim LaPierre, who will be uh, showing us all about the features in AutoCAD Mac, how they differ from AutoCAD. So first of all, before we uh, get started with that, a little bit of an introduction, and we're just going to uh, introduce our local crew here, and Jim will uh, talk a little bit about himself uh, shortly. I'm Volker Coco. I am with uh, Autodesk Tech Support here in Lake Oswego, Oregon, and I am joined uh, by Victoria Studley, who is in our Manchester, New Hampshire office. We will both be moderating this session. And of course, Naman Mysurawala, who is an Autodesk expert elite out of Cincinnati. We're always happy to have Naman here. He has uh, been a very uh, special asset to helping answer questions in our webinars. Before we get started, just uh, as a reminder, we'd like you to feel free to leave questions in our chat window and we will be answering questions uh, throughout the webinar and as time allows after the webinar. Uh, so uh, be sure to get your questions in so that we can be prepared to um, answer those after the webinar. You should have uh, received a reminder and that reminder for the webinar does have links for our previous webinars as well as a feedback forum and our slide and data set uh, downloads that we make available. This session will be recorded, and again, the links will be made available and have been made available in that registration reminder. It'll, they'll also be available in the post-webinar survey, and you should have seen them in the chat window as well. So we've been doing these uh, Autodesk Help webinars for quite a while now, going on almost a year, I think. Uh, this is going to be our 38th webinar, and you can see we've had uh, just a sample of some of the webinars we've had previously. All of these webinars are available, the recordings, on our YouTube channel on the uh, Build Your AutoCAD IQ playlist of the AutoCAD Exchange channel. All right, one quick item of note here is our Autodesk Knowledge Network. We are product support. So we do want to point out that we have a great website for um, both support, for tutorials, for downloads, which are available for um, all of our Autodesk products. Uh, there are some quick links there for our AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT downloads for service packs, hotfixes, sample files, etc. But there's also lots of information available here uh, on this website for um, uh, any kind of troubleshooting that you may have or information about uh, applications which uh, we have available here at Autodesk, as well as uh, trial downloads, too, of a lot of those applications. So I do encourage you to check those out. So that's it for me. I want to make this portion a bit shorter today so that we can give Jim plenty of time to uh, show his uh, presentation. And having said that, I am going to go ahead and let Jim take over here. And tell us a little bit about AutoCAD for Mac. Jim? Um, so yeah, real quick, I'm going to run through the about me, uh, just give you a couple uh, my history with AutoCAD for Mac, uh, talk a little bit about the Mac interface, how it's different, um, how Mac overall is different with AutoCAD for Mac, and then I'll run through a couple little tips and tricks that I've found that kind of ease the transition a little bit if you're thinking about switching or using AutoCAD for Mac. So real quick about me, I started using AutoCAD back uh, in version 13. Uh, on the PC. I've worked uh, electrical mechanical engineering, architectural design. Um, I've kind of moved around quite a bit uh, in any 
anything that I could do with AutoCAD and drafting, I went after it. Uh, I am proud to be an AutoCAD certified expert elite and expert elite member. And I currently own my own company, Impact Designs. I teach AutoCAD and advanced AutoCAD at a local community college. And I have some courses available uh, mostly on AutoCAD for Mac and um, a few other programs on lynda.com. And I am a former genius at Apple Retail. So I drank the Kool-Aid, put on the, uh, got fitted for the pajamas and the whole nine yards. And I am quite the fan boy. Um, I was one of the first people outside of Autodesk to see and use AutoCAD for Mac back in 2010. So, real quick, uh, the last version to run natively on the Mac was version 12. This was back in 1992. Uh, unfortunately, Mac was not doing terribly well back then. Um, Apple in general, everybody was kind of jumping ship. They didn't think it was going to last, and Autodesk kind of followed suit and stopped developing for the Mac. And this was the last version to run. Uh, it was the only image I could actually find of it. Um, but obviously, quite a bit's changed since then. So, for 12 years, there was literally no way to run AutoCAD on an Apple computer. Uh, 2005, Apple went back to from PowerPC to Intel, which meant that you could install Windows on your Apple computer. This meant that after that, you could actually switch into boot camp, run Windows on your Apple computer, and run AutoCAD. Um, this led to two new things. You could dual boot, run Windows at the same time, or do virtualization, parallels, and VMware. It didn't leave us a whole lot of options that were terribly nice. You would either cut your hard drive in half, or you'd have to run a native applica a, uh, application around Windows on a Mac. Neither one were terribly, terribly uh, user friendly. So, in 2010, Autodesk announced that AutoCAD for Mac, the first native AutoCAD application to run in Mac in 17 years. It was rewritten from the ground up as opposed to just simply porting over what was already on the PC side. And the first releases were unfortunately lacking in some features. Uh, since then, though, we've come quite a long way. Obviously, the interface is quite different from what you're used to. Uh, there is no ribbon on Mac. Still have uh, most of the things that we're looking for, though. Still see the familiar command line down here. We still have our status bar down here on the lower right corner. We saw the layers uh, palette here and a properties inspector, very similar to the properties that we have on the PC side. Uh, all of these palettes are uh, floatable, and they are also dockable. If you stretch them over to the, uh, oops, the edge of your screen, they will lock into place. and uh, conform to each other. You can see the little highlighted blue bar that I get right there. Do the same thing up here. And then the palettes actually will respond to each other and take up as much space as they possibly can. We have the toolbar over here on the left side with all the familiar commands that we're used to. Still draw lines. Still draw rectangles and circles, same way we're used to. Still have the dynamic input, if it's something that I want to use. Same way we're used to, type in six, draw six inch uh, radius circle. So most of the commands are here. Uh, again, they're in different places. One thing I have found is the menu bar across the top of the screen is very consistent with what's on the PC. If you're looking for something that's under tools, you're going to find it here. Draw, same thing, arc, circles, donuts, splines, it's mostly there. Uh, dimensions, all the same dimensions tool, tools we're used to. And again, we have the annotation tool palette over here. So this tool palette is slightly unique. Personally, I actually like this a little bit better than the ribbon. We, uh, it doesn't have the contextual part of it, but I'll get into that in just a moment. But it, most screens nowadays are, frankly, they're uh, uh, widescreen. We don't have the uh, 4 by 3 screens anymore, so our, left, our top to bottom screen real estate is really, really small. So personally, I kind of prefer to have my stuff over here on the side. And again, obviously I can, whatever tools I want, I can pop these out and lock them into place the same way you can with the, uh, the ribbon. Grab my move commands, select my objects, and move my objects around. I'll unlock that. When I move away, it goes away. So I mentioned a second ago that the 
objects that we're drawing, um, that the ribbon isn't, uh, or the tool palette over here isn't contextual the same way it is on the, uh, on the PC side. However, we have what are called visors. These little handy tools that drop down up here. They look very similar to the, uh, the ribbon that we're used to. I can still pick my hatches, gradient solids, and so forth. I can click on this. And I can select some uh, different swatches of, uh, see all the swatches, all the different hatch patterns that we're used to from AutoCAD, change my scale, and work through just about everything else that I'd want to work through. When I deselect the hatch, the visor goes away. One thing that is different on the PC side when you want to change your preferences, you have to go into, um, I believe it's under uh, edit, go down to preferences or options. Uh, with everything on the Mac side, everything's built into the menu bar up here at the top. So for us, it's going to be preferences. And again, we get a very Mac-like interface, but most of the uh, tools and options that we're looking for are there. I can still reverse my zoom direction, quick uh, secondary click is return, just like we're used to, set my default file save as to whatever version I like. And I do want to note as I'm talking about this, up till now I've not seen a single file incompatibility between PC and Mac. And a lot of people worry about uh, Macs using different file types or so forth. The uh, guys at Autodesk designed AutoCAD for Mac to use the same file types that we're used to, DWGs, DXFs, um, DWTs, and so forth, that we can bring in, import, and use just as we've always been. Still change my cursor selection and so forth, my units and guides. I can change the look and feel as I like. Some people like the uh, slightly lighter look, so I can go through and change that. Still type in OP, same preferences, that were, same uh, shortcut keys we're used to. And I can switch this back to dark. Sab same application menu that we're used to, I can add in specific locations that I want to have, the fonts, hatches, and so forth, or any other support files that I need. Change my uh, display resolution, and of course I have my login for Autodesk 360. When I'm ready to start a new drawing, I get the same template files, all the same template files we're used to that we've been using in AutoCAD for years and years and years. Start with my basic template, and I can just start drawing. The same undo, cut, copy, paste that we're used to, copy with a base point. All my same views that I'm used to, I can create my viewports, go into 3D viewports. Blocks, underlays, PDF underlays, raster images, just like on the PC version. All my same dimension styles. And I want to note, any file that comes over from the Windows side, all the dimension styles work, all the text styles work, there's no issues. The only issue with text styles may be that a specific font that Windows uses that Mac may not use. In which case, go into AutoCAD, grab it, bring it over, and install it on the machine. So, tool palettes, the same palettes that we're used to. We have our tool sets, which I mentioned is over here. We've got our command line, layers, properties inspector, and status bar. I have a reference manager. So this allows me to uh, add external references. Go in, grab another file. Insert it. And there's all my information. and detach it, just like we're used to. We also have the Content Center. So this is similar to Design Center on the PC side. All the tools that we, uh, all the blocks that are usually on the tool palettes on the PC side are all found here. So if I want to add a, uh, an architectural door, drag in my system, my uh, dynamic block, change the opening, I can work with my diamond by my yeah sorry my dynamic block the same way I would on the PC side. 
in the last version of AutoCAD for Mac, they also in, uh, reintroduced the full functionality of dynamic blocks. So not only can I use them, as I've always been able to do, but now I can actually go into the block editor and create an edit. Sorry. Create and edit all of my dynamic blocks. I have all of my parameters that I'm used to and all the, uh, the action items that I'm used to. The only th difference right now between this functionality and what's on the PC is lookup tables. They're not quite available yet on the Mac side. I'll save my block, save the changes, and there we go. Project Manager is where I would uh, create all my new sheet sets and manage my sheet sets and so forth. And the same materials browser we're used to. One feature I particularly like on the Mac side that isn't available on the PC side is this option right here called Hide Palettes. A lot of us are working with uh, on laptops, maybe it's a 13-inch MacBook Pro or even an 11-inch MacBook Air and we don't have a ton of screen real estate. We can do clean screen, but then we lose our command line and the status bar at the same time, so we end up with absolutely nothing. However, this hide palettes grabs just the uh, tool palettes and puts them on the edge of the screen. Just like we see here. So I keep my command line, I keep my status bar, I get a little bit more screen real estate to work with, but my toolbars are available anytime I need them. When I go away, they actually stay out until I click them and put them away. I can add as many of these as I want. If I open up the Reference Manager Content Center, they'll just keep adding icons down the left side of the screen. When I'm ready, I'll go back, show the full palettes, and they're back right where I left them. All the same 3D modeling tools we're used to, I can still create a box, still have all my, sorry, still have all my orbit tools, and I can still use the view cube. And I also have perspective. Modify just the same as we're used to. Move, stretch, copy, rotate, and all the others. Also have parametric tools, all the geometric constraints, and everything else that we're looking for. Connect, go in, add, uh, look for your, open up your Autodesk 360 drive and open up your drawings, sync your drawings, and so forth. I'm going to pull up a drawing here. So this drawing was actually created on the PC side. So obviously opened up fine. I can go into model space, zoom around, zoom in and modify my geometry. We don't have the layout tabs that we're used to at the bottom of the screen like we do on the PC side. We have a drop down here that allows us to both switch drawings and switch our uh, layouts. And we also have the layout view here. This allows me to jump back and forth between my layouts. I can also manage them here, renaming them, duplicating them, and so forth. And I can also jump into other drawings and jump over into their layouts. So I know the interface can be a little jarring when you first get into it, and it takes a little bit of time to get used to it, locating the different parts that you're looking for. But trust me, most of the work that you're going to be looking for, most of the features are actually floating around out there. Now there are a handful of features that aren't available on the uh, Mac side. We go to Autodesk website. They actually have a very handy little list here. So 
the differences between AutoCAD on the PC side and AutoCAD on the Mac side. The list is fairly extensive and uh, nothing against anybody who created this, but unfortunately I personally find it a little, uh, a little overbearing and a little, um, it seems like it was definitely created by a marketing person in my opinion. There are certain features in here that uh, are completely Windows based that are uh, checked off on one side, not on the other side, uh, but again, if there are any of these tools that don't work for you that you absolutely need, maybe geographic location, um, a visual list support, and so forth, then that might be something to consider with which version you're going to go to. But again, I have uh, a series of clients right now that are working in mixed mixed use environments. Half the people are on Windows, half the people are on Mac. They're running uh, AutoCAD for Mac and AutoCAD for PC, varying versions 2014, 2015, uh, PC 2016, working on the same uh, network drives, same files XREFed in, same files that they're modifying, all at the same time without compatibility issues. So again, go into open. One feature, again, that I actually prefer on the Mac side is we have CoverFlow. So CoverFlow actually allows us to go in to locate a file and I can actually pan through just like they were any other artwork to find the file that I'm looking for and press the space bar and get a little preview, make sure it's the file that I need and then open it. So again, I have all my layouts over here. Jump back and forth. Viewports, select it. I have my properties inspector over here and I can scroll down and examine all the properties, change the scale, unlock it, and move things around. One thing that is unique about AutoCAD for Mac is how we handle the layer menus and editing our layers. So if I go into the layer list here, I have my standard list of layers. I have the drop down up here where I can select my current layer. But when I want to edit one of these specific layers and I select it, the properties inspector actually does double duty. So it switches over here to the layer tab and shows me all the properties of that specific layer. And this is where I can go down and change the color, change the line type, transparency, and so forth. I'll go in, click on manage for line type, click load, just like we're used to. Scroll down, find my line type, add it, and select it. All my layer tools that I, all my favorite layer tools are actually up here. Uh, layer match, uh, layer isolate, layer unisolate, and so forth. With the latest, latest version of AutoCAD for Mac, they also added support for layer states. So we can add new layer states and also manage our layer states. The same way we're used to on the PC side. I can edit them, edit the properties just like we're used to. and then choose them from my drop down and restore them as needed. So uh, one or two little uh, things that I, questions I get a lot of time uh, for AutoCAD for Mac. And the biggest thing is more of a Mac question in general than anything else is, well, I can't right click on a Mac. And unfortunately that's just not the case. So most of us are familiar with what an Apple mouse looks like. They all look like they have one single button. They've looked the same for years and years and years. When PC came out, they had a single button as well. PC, Mac, way back in the 80s, everybody used a single button. PC started to use more and more buttons, right-clicking the wheel and so forth. Eventually, Mac kind of acquiesced and they said, all right, we'll start adding uh, the functionality that they added in control-click. 
wasn't quite as useful as it was on the PC side because we didn't have that right-click functionality. However, as far back as the Magic Mouse, AutoCAD is, I'm sorry, Apple has added the functionality so it actually knows which side of the mouse you're clicking on. It knows if you're doing a right click and it knows if you're doing a left click. If for some reason your computer, when you go into the store, it's not working, you don't see the right click, all you have to do is go up, System Preferences, and then go to the mouse, and there we have the secondary click. I can change it left or right side as it suits me, and we can see all the other gestures that are built in. Do the same thing with the trackpad. If I like, I can specify secondary click with two fingers, and this works the same on a laptop, or I can specify the bottom right corner or the bottom left corner to be my secondary click. So this is the current uh, wireless mouse, the uh, magic mouse that Apple has been uh, selling for the past few years. It recognizes left and right click, and you have the the option, the gesture of rubbing your, or rolling your hand across the top and it zooms in and zooms out. Unfortunately, there's no physical button here to actually click and do panning like we're used to on the PC side. So there's actually a special program here called Magic Preps. It's a free program, but it actually adds a lot of functionality both to the Magic Mouse, the trackpad, and the MacBook trackpad. So if I go into the preferences as I have them here, on the Magic Mouse, I can actually go through, and in this case, I can add a one finger, one finger middle axis click. This is the same as clicking on the wheel on a wheeled mouse, and this allows me to pan around my drawing. Again, it adds a lot of other functionality as well. I can specify uh, certain areas, like what happens if I click the stem of the, uh, the Apple logo, or pinching in and out, and add these functionalities to anything that I like would like them to actually enact. Same thing with the Magic Trackpad. I have three finger click, which is the same as a middle click. You're going to add four and five finger clicks, taps in specific zones, and then I can even actually modify the zones as well to make them very, very precise. I can then use that to actually add a custom action, open up an application, go to my desktop, left click, right click, or anything else that I'd like. One other issue that I see quite often with uh, AutoCAD for Mac is the keyboard. By default, Apple across the top of your keyboard has all the function keys, but they're all mapped to specialty uh, keys where playing and pausing your music, turning your volume up and down, changing the screen brightness, and so forth. If you go to your system preferences, go to the keyboard, under the keyboard tab, there's an option here to use all the function keys as standard function keys. This turns everything back so we can use F8 for ortho, F3 for object snaps, and so forth. If I want to go back and use one of my special keys to turn the volume up or down, all I have to do is hold down the function key, and then it'll do whatever that specialty feature that it was programmed for. So you may notice that I've been kind of swapping uh, back and forth a little bit here between my screens. This is a uniquely Mac feature called Spaces. Uh, it's one that I believe Windows is trying to enact in Windows 10, and I'm all for it. It's a wonderful feature, but it literally allows me to have multiple spaces that I can work from. So I can have my drawing here, and then slide over and see my uh, Safari window, Google, Chrome, whatever it happens to be. I can add another one and put my mail, maybe a messenger, uh, and so forth, maybe a calendar over here. And I can really quickly swipe back and forth. And it's one of the main features that I really, really like about using a Mac just in general. One other tip that I've picked up over the years is up at the very top of your drawing window, if you right click, you're given the option, you actually see the folder hierarchy where you can get to the file that you have open and you can click on the, the folder and it'll open up in Finder and show you where that uh, file is. This is something that was added back in AutoCAD 2015 on the PC side, but it's been available on the Mac side since the first release. 
one other thing I want to talk about is going back to the trackpad and the Magic Mouse. AutoCAD for Mac is the only uh, CAD application right now on the Mac that actually supports I can also use two fingers to pan around. Hey, One Jim. Other thing. Yes. Hey, uh, can you backtrack a, a second? I think we kind of lost you on the audio uh, right um, for that one little uh, spiel there. Okay. Uh, for the pinching and zooming? Yes. So, yeah, the um, obviously all the laptops that uh, Apple sells have the, the uh, touchpad, which is really a multi-touch surface, and you can buy the Magic Trackpad for your desktop. And right now, AutoCAD for Mac is the only CAD application on the Mac that actually supports the pinch and zoom and panning gestures. So I can actually do the reverse pan, and I'll show you what this looks like. So to zoom in or out, you do the little reverse pinch or the pinch there. I can do the same thing in AutoCAD for Mac. Right now, my zoom factor is set a little low but I can also use two fingers and pan around my drawing. So if you are working on a laptop, we don't always have a handy mouse to use that has a wheel or so forth, we can still go in and navigate around our drawing with ease. Another thing that I uh, personally like about AutoCAD for Mac, when, AutoCAD, when Apple released the Retina Display laptops a few years ago, they were the highest resolution displays on the market at the time. And unfortunately, there weren't a whole lot of programs that could take advantage of that. So with the release in 2014, AutoCAD for Mac actually took advantage of that. They rewrote all the icons. They uh, set everything back up. So it is right now, I believe, the highest resolution program, uh, CAD program on the market. And I believe that's PC and Mac. So everybody else is catching up, and I know more programs are uh, getting to that point as more you know, 4K and 5K displays are coming out. But they were the first CAD program to do it, and uh, it definitely shows when you're looking at this on one of the 5K Retina iMacs or on the uh, Retina MacBook Pros. So I'm... Kind of winding down here. I've got I've gone through most of the uh, the interface things. I said everything's very very similar. Once you get past the interface, obviously it's a little jarring if you're coming over. Um, I get asked a question a lot of um, why would I want to go through the rigmarole of you know maybe missing a couple features or uh, you know switching my platform or so forth. I used to work at the Apple Store, and I can tell you from uh, working with small businesses and working as a genius. It's very, very rare for somebody to start using the Mac operating system and then want to go back to the PC or the Windows operating system. It's not saying one is better than the other. Personally, I like a lot of the gestures, the fluidity of it. Um, Apple also not only makes their hardware and their software together, this means that they know that this graphics card is going to work with this computer, their operating system. Uh, Windows is great because you can add in your own graphics card in different instances and kind of build your own computer. But that means you've got to contend with different drivers and trying to make sure that everything's playing together. So it is a little limiting, but when you go buy one of their uh, an Apple product, everything's been designed to work together and fluidly, and you know that it's going to work. So it's one of the main reasons that I switched. There are a lot of other little uh, quirks. Again, the spaces thing, being able to uh, do a little zoom out here and seeing all the windows that I ho have open and go back into one or the other. Um, little workflow features, being able to take a file here and actually drag it down to my uh, mail icon and email it off to somebody. Little things that other operating systems have been picking up over the years that Mac's been doing for quite a while. And I know I sound like a little bit of a fanboy, and the goal here is not necessarily to switch you over to AutoCAD for Mac. It's simply to present it as an option. Whatever operating system that you want to work with, whether it's Apple or uh, Apple or Windows, you should be able to use the programs that you want to use natively. And that's what AutoCAD for Mac is doing. 
Uh, every release, they're adding more and more features, both unique to AutoCAD for Mac and catching up with the, uh, the PC version with 30 years of, uh, of programming. But again, they're catching up, and to digress a little bit, one of the things I actually like about the way they're handling AutoCAD for Mac is they're not just bringing over all the features that we're used to. They're not bringing in 30 years of thinking and bringing in tools that are you know, 25 years old that maybe one or two people actually use anymore. They're rethinking the goal of each of these uh, commands and each of these tools and so forth and trying to accomplish it in a new and maybe even a better way. One example of this is pack and go. So we have pack and draw a drawing here. So again, this is very this is eTransmit for the Mac. Same basic functionality. It allows me to grab any uh, fonts that I have, grabs my uh, plot styles, any fonts, any uh, shape files that I need. If I had any references, it would grab those as well. I can change my package settings, send it off as a zip file or a folder, uh, include different uh, objects or things like that. I can add in additional files if I want to add in maybe a bill of materials that's not in the drawing but that's associated with this project, and then click on package the files and get my zip file and email it off to someone. So they've stripped out some of the FTP and the, uh, the very 90s e-transmit name, and you still get the same functionality, but it's simplified and it to me, it makes a little bit more sense. So again, the goal here isn't necessarily to switch you from one platform to the other. It's to give you the flexibility of choosing whatever platform you want to work with and you still use AutoCAD the way that we want to. And with that, I'm kind of done most of my presentation. Um, I guess if we have any questions or anything like that or uh, any specific topics that I need to go back to and uh, refresh, I'm more than happy to. Great. Uh, thanks, Jim. I'm going to just grab control for a moment, uh, take care of a couple of uh, business items, and then um, we will have uh, Naman and Victoria and myself bombard you with questions that the customers uh, and attendees have, uh, have dropped in our Wonderful. chat window. Okay. So let me... There we go. All right. So first of all, thanks for that uh, excellent overview of uh, AutoCAD for Mac. And um, we do have some additional resources, and uh, we're going to have two different slide decks for you guys to download today. One is, of course, our own here with the uh, links to all of our um, additional resources and to the webinar uh, uh, um, locations. Uh, all the recordings. We also have a uh, some of the coming attractions. Obviously, this mac and cheese. We had that today, but um, we are going to have another 3D webinar coming up uh, on June 11th, as well as a uh, follow-up to our external references webinar, and that'll be on June 18th. Some more modified commands. We'll talk about that. Going right back to the basics, and after that, we are going to take a Fourth of July break. Uh, so uh, after our next webinar after that would be July 9th. Now, I'm not used to doing the uh, uh, introductions uh, for those who have uh, uh, joined us in the past, uh, so I totally blew it. I have a couple of polls I'd like to run real quick like, uh, so I'm hoping you'll bear with me and, uh, and take a moment to participate in these. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, We'll um, do a little bit of Q&A with Jim there. So first of all, um, our first poll is this your first Autodesk Help webinar? And it looks like um, quite a few attendees who have been here before. About 11% on the uh, the newer end, 10% maybe. Uh, so um, welcome everybody who is new and welcome back for those who have returned. We're always glad to see you back. So um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of close that one and just kind of throw that up there for you to see what's going on, what the results were. And uh, let me go ahead and toss out 
couple more here. So one of the things we're always interested in is what application you are using. And in this case, is it AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, one of the verticals, and this could be uh, architectural or civil, or even other. So right now it looks like about 50%, about half the audience is using AutoCAD. And uh, about 22, 23% using AutoCAD LT. So. Uh, just to kind of let you see what the results are here. Two more polls, if you'll bear with me. So the one we're interested in right now is, are you working with or planning to work with uh, AutoCAD for Mac? And that could be LT, AutoCAD LT for Mac, or um, the full-blown AutoCAD version. And 8% of you are using AutoCAD for Mac. So there is, um, we posted a link earlier where you can try out that AutoCAD for Mac if you have a Mac platform. Uh, we do have cross-platform licensing available. So maybe something to check out. AutoCAD for Mac is just getting better and better, um, improving with each release, as uh, Jim also pointed out. So let me go ahead and close this poll show you the results, and then one final poll, and we'll get to Q&A. So, oops, forgot to click the button. I have my awkward moments for those returning, and so if I can't have them while demonstrating AutoCAD, I'm going to have them while I'm doing polls. <laughs> All right, so last poll. So, did you learn anything new today? Was, uh, you know, and basically, was the session worth it? Um, did you get some, glean some good information out of this? I found it, personally, I found it to be very informative. And here we are, we troubleshoot and assist people with the product. So, um, some of the uh, tiny insights that uh, you normally wouldn't hear about or that we normally wouldn't know about. Jim has pointed out to us, and it's always good to know. Always good to see things from a different perspective. So let me share that one, and then I am going to turn this over to Jim so that we can um, get your questions answered. So, Jim, um, I'm handing it over to you. Okay, uh, Naman and Victoria, do we have any uh, good questions for uh, Jim that we can uh, quiz him with? We've got a few. Um, let's see. I know the, the first question, um, the first question I see that I'd like to throw out there is, um, is there support for uh, AEC objects or objects from Civil or other programs like that in AutoCAD for Mac? And I, I tried to answer this, but I, I'm not 100% sure. So Jim, what do you what do you think? From my experience, most of the objects themselves kind of come in. They're, uh, they definitely lose their intelligence as they come into AutoCAD for Mac. Um, it was kind of similar with dynamic blocks. You could, uh, up until the latest release, you could bring them in, you could use them, but you couldn't create them or edit them. Um, it's a uh, similar thing with the AEC objects. Some of them come in kind of broken. It depends on really the complexity of them. Um, and some of them are, are, you know, just end up sort of like a block. So it, it's unfortunately a little, um, it, it's a non-answer, but some do, some don't. Great. Right. That, that makes sense. I think I said that um, you might want to... I can add, can I add, add a little bit on to this? Go ahead, Norman. Um, this is uh, this is Norman. Uh, just uh, to kind of do a quick add-on. So, if you are having a vertical pro uh, CAD sending out somebody, make sure proxy graphics is turned on when you save the file in the regular vertical AutoCAD, and then uh, hopefully they'll 
there's a better chance of it showing up correctly on the Mac side and that, that showing it up uh, not work with it as such. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. That's and that really goes, uh, you know, is something to be said about um, even work with working with AutoCAD for Windows. Um, uh, proxy graphics tend to cause problems when not enabled. So, let's see. So we get a lot of questions about verticals for AutoCAD for Mac, such as Civil 3D, Map 3D, AutoCAD architecture, and even Revit. Uh, I, um, there are plans for some of these products, but they are, I, I, I really don't know. Um, uh, as far as the development side goes, um, you know, we are not the product teams. We don't really have, uh, we aren't really privy to, uh, you know, what applications are in the works. And, uh, uh, but um, the best way to get more information about that is I had uh, actually posted a, fee a product feedback link a little earlier, and I will throw that in the chat window again. Um, leave feedback with the product team. Let them know what you want, uh, what you want, because um, uh, this is, this is, uh, you know, how they get their feedback is from you, the customer. Your voice is very powerful. Uh, believe it or not, it is. And um, uh, the only way the product team will know what the people want is by you giving that feedback. Uh, so I am uh, paste that in the chat window here in a second. And Volker, if I can say, um, I definitely agree with that wholeheartedly. I've had been, you know, honored to have some of the uh, some interactions with the different product teams and things like that over the past couple of years with AutoCAD for Mac, and they are always interested in what the customer wants. They're uh, kind of uh, craving all the feedback that they can get, so they know which directions to go into and uh, which features they should be working on, <clears throat> excuse me, which verticals they should be uh, focusing on and so forth. So they are definitely uh, listening with open ears. Yes, yeah, and, and we've seen quite a change, I think, in philosophy over the years here, and all for the better, and uh, and I like that. Um, and that's, you know, just like you, Jim, I've been an end user, and I, I've seen good things happening over the years. Um, so... Not just saying all this because I work here. I truly believe this. Um, let's see. We do have uh, Jim. Do you have any? Um, uh, we have one question. How stable do you find the Mac version of AutoCAD? Um, the customer says I am using it on a brand new iMac 5K Yosemite and suffer 20 plus crashes every day. That's a lot. Um, no real pattern apart from zooming with the magic mouse. Hmm. One thing to check, um, if you go into preferences, um, there's an option here. This is uh, a newer one uh, called activating the OpenGL core profile where it's uh, offloading some of the display um, processing to the graphics card and, or not. Um, try deactivating this, turning it off on some Macs. Um, it seems to work better without this, it's sort of like hardware acceleration. Um, some of them it seems to work better without this. Some of them it works uh, better with it. So it's definitely one of the first things, if it, if, especially if it's happening when you're zooming in and out, um, that I definitely take a look at. And um, I'll just add on to that. If um, if you are experiencing that many crash crashes and that's not helping, and you're uh, you know put in a support request. Uh, I know the Mac team. Uh, is really, really on top of these things, trying to figure out what's going on, why things aren't compatible if they aren't. And um, uh, and really, it's not just the Mac team, but there's an interest in, in helping you, the customer, uh, resolve the issues. So, um, yeah, please do that. Can I ask something again <laughs> about the support any, request? Anytime, anytime. All right. 
Um, it, it was a, a weird coincidence because uh, I always, you know, you get that pop-up at least in the Windows world. I'm not sure about the Mac world where you do get that pop-up saying AutoCAD just crashed and you want to send an error report. And uh, one time I suppose, uh, submitted a support request and they said, hey, what, could you submit the crash report? Uh, give me the ID number or something like that. Or which email address did you use to uh, submit that? crash report and they looked it up and they were able to uh, help me much faster so when you get those pop-ups when it crashes it says hey send the error report make sure you put your email address in there that way if you create a support request you can say hey look it up in the DER database uh, and uh, that helps uh, tremendously and speeds up the process for you as well and that is like the greatest message you could have given us today, uh, those um, error reports, a lot of people tend to dismiss them, but uh, on the troubleshooting side, uh, here in product support, it does allow us to find out where the problem occurred, if it's a known issue, if it's something we can quickly help you resolve because of um, how it crashed. Um, it tells us a lot about this. If it's something arbitrary, it does collect all this in a database where um, it matches up with other um, customers who have submitted error reports and it allows us to see if maybe a particular video card or, or maybe a printer driver or, or something else in Windows is and on the Mac as well uh, is causing uh, the application to crash. So submit that. It may not seem like you're getting anything out of it but for the most part you are. Uh, it's helping us better the product on both the AutoCAD and Windows side. So we have about, um, I think, nine, a little less than ten minutes left here. One of the questions, support.net on I Mac. I have a question. Yeah, I got a, uh, another question about uh, some people were asking me, and the system was, well, and I personally have a personal question too, in the sense that uh, AutoCAD is all about customization. So can I run my auto list? Can I customize my menus or toolbars, uh, what's the customizability, Jim? So it is a little, uh, it's different than what it is on the PC side. I can still run Lisp programs. They don't have support for Visual Lisp. Um, right now, just vanilla Lisp is really the only programming language that they allow. Um, there is, however, um, some other, uh, as far as the uh, CUI and so forth, I can type in CUI the same way I do on the uh, PC side. I have my tool sets here over on the left side. I can go in and um, drag and drop in additional commands, take them out. I can create new tool sets if I like, name them whatever I like, and add tools in there specific to whatever task I'm looking for. Same thing with the menu uh, menus. I can add or remove different commands from the uh, menu bar and commands as well. I can still do macros, uh, create my own buttons, create, uh, chain my actions and my commands together, create a little macro, and add that to a custom toolbar. So right now there are a few things. There's no uh, support for exporting out um, the, uh, the workspaces or anything like that because we really don't have workspaces on the Mac side um, and the profiles aren't easily uh, transferable. But as far as customizing the individual machine, all the buttons stuff is there, all the macros are there, and it still supports Visual Lisp, but, uh, or I'm sorry, it supports, doesn't support Visual Lisp, it still supports Vanilla Lisp. So to add on to that real quick, uh, one of the reasons um, it does not support Visual Lisp is because uh, Visual Lisp makes use of um, a lot of calls to the Windows API. And yeah, of course, like .NET and some of the other programming languages, they're very Windows oriented. So. Exactly, exactly. So um, anything that's making use of Windows functionality, Windows.NET, Windows API, it's not going to happen uh, just because it's a Mac. I mean, you know, there's a difference there. Um, one customer is asking, what is vanilla Lisp? Uh, just auto Lisp. Um, uh, a programming language for uh, full-blown AutoCAD. Uh, someone else is also asking about ARX. No, that is Visual, uh, that's C++ programming. Uh, so again, not supported on the Mac.
A uh, customer was asking, can we import menus from a PC AutoCAD format, customization menus? Um, no. Uh, there are two different types of menu systems. Or am I uh, missing something on that one, Jim? No, to my knowledge, you can't uh, import them. The, the CUI is a bit different, so there's no way of importing the, the CUI straight into AutoCAD for Mac the way you can on transferring it from PC to PC. Yeah, I've um, I actually had a support case on that not too long ago, and uh, you know, unfortunately, um, um, well, I'm hoping to see better for that somewhere in the future. Uh, me being big on customization and everything, uh, but uh, again, uh, product feedback. So, any other questions that we might what have missed or can answer here? Uh, Nauman, Victoria. There's a one about hey, Volker. Yes. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a good question about 3D in AutoCAD for Mac. Jim, do you have any experience with them? Uh, how does the 3D compare to AutoCAD for Windows? Uh, 3D modeling and then rendering is two separate questions, but related. Yeah, the rendering is very similar. Um, there are some uh, advanced rendering features that we don't have on AutoCAD for Mac. Again, if you go back to that kind of checklist, there's a few specific ones that are um, uh, too hard to remember which ones exactly. I don't do it ton ton of uh, rendering but obviously there's a fair amount of uh, 3D the uh, I can still spin my models around create 3D models these were created uh, solely in AutoCAD for Mac um, so I can still do all the uh, visual styles I can apply materials to my different uh, surfaces and so forth um, there's just some lighting features and some uh, commands some dialog boxes that we don't have on the Mac side but as far as the uh, performance and everything like that, I actually like the AutoCAD for Mac performance better than the PC side. There was a time in the early versions where um, it wasn't up to par, but they really, really tweaked it to take advantage of the, uh, the Mac OS operating system, and I think it's in quite speedy now. Um. Okay, and that was on the render there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hope we answered that one for you, Luciana. Um, are the model documentation tools available in the Mac? I'm sorry, the model documentation tools? Yeah. So uh, in the layout. As in like... Oh, like creating the different views in the sections? As in view base. Yeah, view base. Yeah, right. that's, yeah those are available. Um, they can get a little quirky, but they um, the commands that are there and they uh, they work. Okay. Well, um, I think um, it's tapered down a bit. Uh, we are... Pretty close to running out of time. Uh, Jim, I really, really appreciate you being here today. And uh, uh, Jim, of course, feel free to I'm, – I'm speaking for you now, Jim, but feel free to contact Jim <laughs> about this about this webinar with, uh, uh, your, um, with what he's covered on the AutoCAD for Mac side. And um, you know, obviously, we know your time is valuable. And uh, we do appreciate everybody uh, having been here today. And uh, hopefully we'll see you all again next week as well. Jim, do you have any final words? No. Um, like I said, if anybody has any questions, I mean, feel free to email me. I'll get back to you as best I can. Or obviously go to the support team there, there to answer your questions and to help out. Um, but, yeah, hopefully you guys can take a look and use the program on whatever operating system that you want to use it on. Excellent. Excellent. Hey, thanks again, Jim, for being here, and thank you, everybody, for attending. We're going to go ahead and call it a day, because uh, it is. It's a Thursday. We'll see you next week, everybody.